students are interested in participating. So I wanted to put it in front of you for you got much farther on your budget. And I'm happy to ask, you know, any questions about what the Conservation Commission has discussed about it or anything else that you might want to know about it or any questions you may have. Are those those groups usually look for like dollar for dollar matching? Like, it really depends on the project okay. and it depends on the inventory uh, conservation value of a piece, right? So some piece might have sentimental value but very little conservation value. Mm -hmm. Some piece might have a lot of conservation value and nobody even knows it's there, mm -hmm. right? It's out in the middle of nowhere that no, nobody even realizes. I mean, you know, the Dodge Farm is kind of funny like that. Yeah. Like it's 250 acres, but you can only see little slips of it from the main roads. Mm -hmm. And it's this huge, you look at a map, it's this huge yeah. chunk in the middle of, you know, probably most people in town, newer people in town, have never heard of the Dodge Farm. Mm -hmm. But everybody knows the field on Bear Road. Right. And as of our last meeting, which was about a week and a half ago, um, there are, there, the owner and a buyer are in pretty serious conversation. So, and we may take that hit. And maybe that happens, and then that super motivates people to say, we don't want this to happen again. Right. It might be too late because we haven't been proactive in our efforts. We don't have a million bucks to put up. Well, we don't, and we don't put, we don't make a good, good conscious effort every year to show that we're serious about doing it by putting a little money aside every year either. Because ten thousand dollars is nothing. Really. It's not yeah. And so this land is all in Rollins Any piece of conservation land that our conservation commission would be advocating to work with a larger. Conservancy group would be obviously in Rollins. But I mean, on the Road, it's all in Rollins. Road is a is a Rollins piece. Yeah, all of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fifty five acres. Yeah. But from Fresh Creek to like the middle of the field, it's that parcel, and it goes into the woods. Yeah. It's riverfront. Well, it's salt. It's a salt marsh. It's an estuary in the back. Like the, the salt, the tidal water comes all the way up into the back of um, Old Mill Road. Mm -hmm. So, and people don't realize that. And that's why, if it gets built, the house will sit up front in the field because all of that water is going on. All that, all that, uh, you know, more preservable, valuable land for nature would be in the back. Mm -hmm. So everybody goes, "Oh, the house will be in the woods." You wouldn't even see them. like, "No, they won't," because right behind the woods is all the, the wetland. Mm -hmm. There. Has anybody approached us about the possibility of building out there? These no. developments? No, but that would not be indicative of any potential plans necessarily because our zoning ordinance is online and typically the people the developers are familiar with our regulations. They work with professionals who have represented other projects in town and are therefore familiar with our regs, and that's really all they need to know to know what the potential is in Rollinsford in any given area for development. And the job that we have to do as a conservation commission is to, you know, connect with people in the town to understand that choice, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do we want this or not? Mm -hmm. And I've been doing conservation stuff in town since 2004. And I remember in the early 2000s, it might have been five or six, um, Stratford Regional Planning did a free workshop for the town at the grade school, and about 40 people came, and it was planning for uh, 2020. Weirdly, which is just three short months away, which at the time in 2005 felt like, well, that will never happen in 2020, right? But what was so interesting is they kind of put the whole, uh, the whole room through an exercise of, you know, here are these maps, and here's the different kind of resources and, and kinds of things that are in these different areas of town. Where would you put development? Where would you put land conservation, you know, conservancy? Where would you do this? Where would you do that? And people really struggled with giving up any of the land for it. It was really interesting when the conversation was really put to people. Mm -hmm. And then we had an interesting conversation about the land that we do have that's zoned for commercial. What kind of commercial would we want there? Mm -hmm. And so this whole report was made from that, and it, you know, it ended up being like a great exercise, and it, it was really kind of interesting at the time. Created a little fluff. Not long after that, we got Scott Land into an easement. That was kind of an out, outcome of it. Mm -hmm. But then it all kind of died down, and we haven't done a lot of work on master plan. We haven't really, you know, done a lot of those things with our zoning and our planning since that time mm -hmm. to put some parameters around this and find out where people's 
uh, you know, interests lie in the town, what, what, kind of, what kind of town do we want to be? At the time, it was we want to preserve our rural character. That's who we are. And if you think about the last 15 years, how much rural character has been destroyed around us. I mean, Dover's gone. You know, farm. Portsmouth has exploded. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's changed tremendously in 15 years. And here we are, we're still sitting there with this, it's almost like a magical bubble is over us, but it's all still here. And maybe the majority of the town will want to develop it all. And maybe they won't. But I think we could use this as an opportunity to start really in earnest having that conversation and have a couple of pretty serious things on the table right out of the gate that we could, we could make decisions about rather than just letting it happen to us. Be proactive about it. Be in a planning mindset about how we want to control what happens instead of just letting it happen. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been talking about over the summer. And we will have a speaker come in. We were going we to invite like Peter Michel to our November meeting, who grew up here and knows the history, to give us a little bit more background on those couple of pieces from that historical perspective, so we could put together more information that almost inventory that about those properties, kind of collect that, those stories, so people could know it a little better. Um, but the guy from uh, Kingston is also going to invite you to come and talk to us about that, that transcript as well. So. But the, the question for you, or, the, or the, what I'm putting forth as a consideration from the Conservation Commission as an advisory board to you, or you know, to be able to get an opinion to you from the board, is we would really like you to consider for the budget putting a larger number on that and drawing some more attention to that account and what it's for and what we might possibly be able to do with it when you're putting the budget together overall to go in front of the budget committee. This is definitely get in our budget. We don't have a right. We don't have a budget. I mean, we have our budget, but we don't yeah. have a yeah. Yeah. It's that ends up in a Warren article, right? Yeah. It is a Warren article. So with the, I, I imagine there are a number of factors in determining what would be a good amount of money to put in that Warren article. Some being the amount of available land that you're trying to conserve. Um, but all you know, and, and you know, the deliberative session could change the amount too. So it, it's it's a conversation starter that could change there, but um, what is your experience about how much, or what do you know about how much money annually gets the attention of conservation groups? Well, different, I, I don't think it's, I don't, I think it's, it's a good faith effort annually. I think it's the amount of money that you have to put toward the project. So if McHugh's, if McHugh's property is a million dollars and we have a third of that, we can go to the major conservatory and say, we have a third of the money, how can you match us, we want to work with you, you know, we'll be private funding. You know, you, have, you just have to be able to go and play in the game, right? You can't just show up and go, oh, well, we've, you know, we have $25,000. Like, you can't be that, I don't think, to have them take you seriously. Some towns do it all themselves and buy it outright. They put aside enough money to buy things outright and then choose which conservancy group, you know, like a CELT group that would support them. But, you know, there's uh, Farmington and Barrington have put huge, but Barrington put 3,000 acres of land in conservancy, and the town raised half the money. And the major conservancy paid the other half. So, you know, it just depends on the situation, I think. Um, the number that the Conservation Commission threw around based on things that Linda had researched in other towns was, a good faith, you know, number for this year would be let's up it to twenty five thousand dollars, and then we can have a conversation about what might be a good annual amount that we could settle on if we would want to put in on a regular basis. So that was their starting point. But I'm I'm going to tell you, you know, I I'm 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 ignorant about that. Other than I, it makes perfect sense to me how it works. Mm -hmm. I think it's so case by case and each individual situation that I can't say there's like a standard set amount. Sure. Yeah. Any other community input?
the police department has had a web page and email long before the town did. Tia Pass has always picked up that cost herself. And this year I asked her to submit a reimbursement to us because I don't, I don't think she should be she's doing that on her own anymore. So I have personal number 1693, email to Tia Pass for reimbursement for all of our email address fees and our domain name through the GoDaddy website. And that's a total of $403.73. Now, I don't know if you want to take that out of the technology line item, or I do have money in the office uh, office expense line item. I think they can take that out of, so. I think it would be good, since it's going to be an annual expense, to put it in IT and budget it for it in IT. I'll move purchase order 1693 uh, to Tia Pass in the amount of 4373 for reimbursement of email address and domain name. Second. Okay. Any discussion? So this brings her current for 2019. Is this all of 19? 19 and 20. Yeah. Because they're two year every other registration. Every other year registration. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. But she already paid it. She's already paid it. Okay. But we won't see this expense in 20, is what you're saying? Correct. Okay. All right. Jessica? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, personal number 1704, made out the Taylor rental, um, for diagnose a short in the wiring for a utility trailer hook up and cruise 72 and to replace all of the converter wiring and that's $258. We developed a, a short somewhere along the way and it messed up the uh, uh, not only the lighting on the, on the utility trailer but the, the, the cruiser itself and that's, that's our newest one, one that we got last year. So They were able to take it in right away and then fix it for us within the day. So. Uh, purchase order 1704 to Taylor Rental for diagnosing the short and the wire in the utility trailer. 258. We'll Lastly, we have our annual taser recertification coming up in December, so we need to order some training cartridges and a battery from one unit. So purchase order number 1705 to Axon, A-X-O-N, for a battery and training cartridges for $748, and that will come out of our equipment line item. Move purchase order 1705 to Axon, $748 for Our animal control officer has expressed a desire to uh, work as a part-time police officer. Uh, we currently have one vacant part-time position open at this point. I anticipate that uh, by the end of the year we may have uh, an additional one or two vacant positions. Um, by allowing her to, uh, to do this, uh, we'll get a female on the department. And, uh, you know, she already has some, some knowledge of the town and she's been working with the community, you know, for three years. So I think she'll be a, a welcome addition. So what I'd like to have her do is schedule a meeting to, to come and meet with you folks and uh, uh, you know, give her the opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, 
give you her story, and certainly if you have any questions about, about her at that point. Uh, the academy would, would start in uh, January. And for the part-time visits, uh, two nights a week, but they go to Concord for a couple of hours. Will she maintain her job? I mean, Will she maintain her job position as well? Yeah, she will maintain, maintain and control of this position as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, why don't you just kind of give us a couple of dates, and uh, we can meet with her. Okay, correct. Okay. And lastly, ordinances. Passing. Recently, the Highway Safety Committee met, and um, we talked about, first of all, the, the speed limit on Bear Road, which is becoming a point of contention uh, lately, uh, more so than, than in the past. So you have two copies of the units in front of you. You have the, the original ordinance as it's, as it's written um, currently, and highlighted red will be the changes. The second copy behind that, attached to that, will be the final draft. So for the speed ones, we're looking to remove Bear Road from the 35 zone to the, and add that to the 30 zone along the Hollow Road, Kent Street, Old Indigo Hill Road, Pease Lane, Ross Road, Settlement Circle, Spruce Street, Stevensport, Toll Road, and Rutler Street. All of the other streets in town that are not listed in the ordinance are not listed in the ordinance for the 30 zone. And then the section three where we're dealing with the 35 zone specifically to Bear Road. That's our recommendation to the select board to bring for a public area. And the second one is the travel restrictions. Currently, the uh, travel restrictions for commercial vehicles are limited to Bear Road, Slider Road, and Pinch Hill. This one in Sable will actually prevent all large commercial vehicles from traveling on any roadway in town, any town maintained road, excuse me, um, unless they are delivering services to that particular road or they're going to and from their place of business through town with their most direct route. For example, uh, Mick Construction could not use Spondy Street uh, to get to Maine. They would have to use the most direct route, which would be Main Street to Silver Street and out. Uh, C&J Bus would not be allowed to use Spondy Street to get to Dover or to Sulphur. They would use the roads that they currently use, Province Road or Main Street. So, so we're actually not prohibiting anybody that's in town from any of, any of the, the routes that they normally take. We're just prohibiting all the folks that come through town and using like Bear Road or Clement Road or some of the other roads as cut throughs. Um, or the GPS sends them that way because it's the quicker route. Correct. Not the best, better route for that vehicle. Right, yeah, right. GPS usually sends you the most quickest route as opposed to mm -hmm. the correct route. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have that trouble on Oak Street quite often. Uh, the truckers will put uh, in, a, in some destination and they find that they're going down Oak Street. And uh, you know we're stopping them for, for weight limit violations going over the bridge, and they're all saying, "Well, you know, my GPS unit told me to go this way." Um, even though there is an established truck route going through Rollins, you know, Portland Avenue, <coughs> Oak Street, down Portland Avenue, and, and all the way through down, downtown Dover, and then out to Rollins. Mm -hmm. The bridge isn't posted, right? It is posted, yes. Not until you get there. <laughs> Right. Well, if, you, if, you're, if you're coming from the Rollinsford direction, Portland Avenue or Rollinsford is posted to let you know the bridge is posted. However, if you're coming from Oak Street and Dover on either end, or Portland Avenue from Dover or Broadway from Dover, it's not posted. Right. And I repeatedly uh, have sent uh, letters to the DOT asking them to do that. And uh, uh, I don't know if we'll get to the point where I said, we're not going to enforce that weight limit on that bridge anymore. I had to post it. We have had some truckers say, well, I didn't realize that it was posted until I got to the bridge. I've got a line of cars behind me. What am I going to do at that point? I can't back up because they're backed up to the traffic light on Oak Street on Mullins Road. So uh, quite often, uh, well, I shouldn't say quite often, but at least a couple times a year, we'll get a call from a trucker and say, hey, can you come out here and do traffic? Or we can I need to back up because I made it to the bridge and 
didn't realize it was posted until I got there. Well, less than a month ago, I called the police department or the yeah, the police department because it was a tractor trailer right on the other end, and cars were passing and yeah. um, you know, and it was like it was dangerous, you know, and it's like why did you get it? But then I went and I didn't see any signs on the roof four right. one. <laughs> it was on the roof four side. But it's like, yeah, I mean, it can be dangerous because how the heck is he going to get out if you don't have help, you know? So, so as far as the travel warrants uh, is concerned, you know, that would that would uh, have an expense to it. We'd have to buy some signs. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we put <clears throat> put them on the main approaches of town like Dover does, like so on Fulton Avenue, Rollins Road on both ends, um, Front Street, so all of your your main Summersworth Road uh, and Rollins Road, so all of your main approaches will have these signs so they can't say, well, I didn't know. So. Okay, so our action then is to make a um, public hearing date, right? And get this through. And does Highway Safety uh, group we'll be, come and... There'll be at least one representative, but hopefully okay. uh, several members will be here. For okay, all right. Hearing, yes. So that's our action then for this, is to make sure that we get a public hearing. Well, I can't imagine it would take that long. So I don't know if you want to do, do it prior to our scheduled meeting. Yeah, sure. okay, that's no. a good idea. Like a half an hour, plan, half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay. You don't need that long. Yeah, yeah. okay. Nobody's going to show up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'll allow like 15 minutes. Uh, yeah.
you even need to purchase one for that? Oh, I didn't because it's one of the one thing. All right, well, I filled it out. Yeah, yeah it could have been under the other side. I'm sorry, how much is it for? Right, 130. Yeah, I didn't really need one. <coughs> you can, I'll, I'll take the invoice and you can, um, uh, can actually, I'll take the whole thing. Take the whole thing. Yeah. You actually don't because it's just $130. We don't approve every invoice? No. Not under so so the approval is in the purchase order. If it's but he's under the approve the purchase order because it's under the hundred and thirty dollars. Right. Department heads can spend money at will within their budget under at like under two hundred dollars at a time. And it doesn't have to be signed by us, the yes. invoice? No. Okay. You can review that when we I will. Get the Thank you. All right, go ahead. And that's what we're going to start when I was in Florida, so we should change that to $500,000. No. Remember that, <laughs> remember that discussion yeah, we had before no. over broken down fire trucks and whatnot? So uh, that's where all that came from. <laughs> okay, one last one. This one is for, been a long time coming, and something that we want to do is going to help us with our dispatching and individuals responding for calls. Um, this was on the back burner for a while and I had explained what Dover was going through all their upgrades and we were doing all our road radio upgrades and whatnot. Now the door is up and running. They have a spot in their CAD, which is computer-aided dispatching over there. A spot for us. And what we want to do is we want to add a uh, uh, paging services for us. We use our little individual pagers. But they have a very limited distance to which anybody's going to hear. Um, since we only have five of us that live in town, we're fine, we hear them, but we have people that are a little further outside that circle. Pages don't always work. There's always a little bit of a dead spot. So the system that we have now at the station is off of our computer through a uh, monitor, and then we dispatch it ourselves out to the station. But it's not foolproof because when we have lightning strikes and power bumps and issues like that, it'll shut that system down. So there's been times when we've gone to calls, and if the local guys didn't hear it, we don't get all the rest of the members. They don't have any notification. So what we want to add is the IM responding system. You're very familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, to our system. And what's going to happen is that would be dispatched. That would be notified through Dover. When a call came to Dover to get the fire department on the air, they just want to push a button. And it's going to go through everybody's cell phones, their iPhones and whatnot. And there's no way they should ever miss anything. So if we have a failure in town of our local system, this right here, one hundred percent backs up all that. At least now, and the other benefit to this is, when there's a call right now, uh, I'll show up at the station. I don't know who's coming. I have no idea who heard it or who's going to respond. With this type of system, they're going to put a TV screen up in the radio dispatch room, and everybody on their phone is going to have the ability. If they're going to make the call, they can type in what they're going to do. So they may still be ten or fifteen minutes out. But now I know who's coming. So if I can get two or three guys here, we get the first piece of equipment on the road. Okay, I know I got another engine company right behind me. It's going to take their travel time into the station. We're going to have the ability to send out uh, group messages um, that we have struggle with now over this system. Um, four or five of the towns around us use this system, so we can integrate with them. And actually, what happened is uh, South Burke uses it, Elliott uses it, North Burke uses it, Newington uses it. You know, we talked to the representative. Well, this is a $1,400 system, but we kind of slid under the rug and I get the same system as a group discount for 860. So we did a little bit of marketing and maneuvering and whatnot. So um, if we if this gets approved tonight and everybody's okay with it, I can have this up and running at the fire station by the end of the week. And that's going to greatly improve um, our knowing who's coming and what our length of time is to get stuff out. So it's a uh, Purchase order 1652. It's called I Am Responding. It's a paging service is the name of it. It's actually to an emergency service company that comes out and do it. New York is where their home base is. I had a telephone conversation with these folks the other day. I'm somewhat familiar with it. Probably not as much as you are because I don't hear to use it. Dave is very familiar with it. This is a major upgrade for us as far as getting our people on the road and knowing that we're going to have enough people when it comes to road calls. So. The good thing is that they know, you know, that they have a driver coming or they have an officer coming. Because I can coming. label that. I can say this guy's exactly. driver, this guy's an EMT, yeah. this guy can drive the tank truck. Yeah. So if I'm not always there, some of the other officers can look and say, okay, I got this guy, I got a company there, I got this, I got yeah. this. So we can start piecing things together rather than, all right, who's coming through the door? Right. Or yeah. standing there yeah. hoping somebody comes through the door. Yeah. Yeah. 
know, saying they're an ETA of two minutes or right. half an hour right. or whatever, you can base your who you're going to wait for by that um, technology you didn't have before. Oh, yeah. It is a good. It's going to uh, give me a few less gray hairs as quick as I get them. <laughs> I know it's coming um, on a timely basis. <laughs> I move purchase order 1652 to uh, to emergency services marketing corp incorporated for I am responding payment services in the amount of 860. I'll second that. And where is that coming out? That is going to come out of basically radio equipment under our paging. So that new line item that we used last year to get all our stuff up and running, we're going to slide it right under that that line item. And um, you just gave me my newest thing here. That was a fifteen thousand dollar line to fill in. That was the one we're going to use year to year to add more portables to get more number. It's going to slide it under there, so there's plenty of funds for that. And right now it's eight sixty. Um, that's even going to go lower because it's going to be a subscription thing. We can get it in a three or a five year increment once we get it up and running. There's also a fifty dollar setup fee, so that'll go away. But if we decide once we get it up, we want to go to a three or five year commitment, we can make it less than that. So there's, there's other options. So this is a year. It's just for the first year, we're going to get it in, get it going, work the bugs out, and then I know as we go along, when we come back for this next year, it's going to be a lot less. So this is going to be October to October? Uh, probably, yeah. So you'll need to, if you week. want, you'll have to adjust your budget to reflect for 2020. Yep. Right. Uh, it'll fit right in where I got a spot. All right. But I understand what you're saying. Okay. All right. Any questions? No. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Because the other thing that that's going to allow us to do with this system is I've talked before about uh, our little iPads that every fire department now is starting to use. They have a system that will integrate that into it also. So we can have something just as big as your computer, a little tablet in front of us. And we can plug in buildings. We can put building plans in it. We can put fire detection systems in it. We can put fire hydrants in it. So if we're out shoveling hydrants with five feet of snow that he can't dig out or we find for a church course to help us with, we can put all that stuff right in there, and that, that information is just put and push, uh, pushing buttons instead of filing through paperwork. So there's a lot of good to that. that we're going to get paying for our life. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for the board. Anybody have anything for me? No? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Good. The only thing I need from you, and I'll get it Thursday, is I need some more purchase orders. There's not enough. I stole the last one. I'll see you Thursday. All right. Okay? I'll restart. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm trying not to, but some things we just have to do. That. All right, guys. Thank you.
We don't have to, you know, necessarily. We have another week to talk before we Yeah, that. we don't yeah. have to okay. straighten it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. Transfer station ordinance revisions. Is that you? Thank you. Okay. I have gone through the ordinance. I haven't found anything. I guess part of it depends on where we're headed. And I found a few things in here that probably could be cleaned up some. Um, but to give you an update on where we might be headed, or where I'd like to think we might be headed, I had talked about scales uh, quite some time ago. And we've been, George and I have been talking, and I've been talking to the guys at the transfer station on how it may work, and talking to Caroline about it. Um, as far as using the scales, my primary thought on the scales when I saw them in May at the uh, NRRA conference was to be able to weigh our cardboard bales, weigh our plastic bales. Uh, those are the two products that we ship out. The aluminum bales, we take over to Berwick, and we're right with them when they get weighed. So it's, you know, but I'd probably weigh them anyway to know. Uh, I just don't like the idea of shipping stuff out and being at somebody else's win as to what they weigh. You know, are they, I assume they're giving us the right weights, but if I can say, I've sent you 30 bales, they were 1,000, 35,000 piece, we know. So, um, when I talked to the gentleman about the scales in May, uh, they were a lot cheaper than I thought they were. And then from that point, we've been discussing amongst ourselves the possibility of charging by weight the demo. Um, I don't know, I'm still being pushed in between on that. Uh, the more we talk about it, the more, I won't say cons we come up with, but it's labor intensive. It's probably the biggest one. Um, I don't know, our, the way our ordinance is written, it says small pickup truck, six foot bed is like $35. I don't know what the weight is. It's, I mean, you can fit a lot of weight in that, or you can put in, it, are, you, are you hauling feathers or lead, basically? Um, so what we'd have to do, my, I guess my plea is, I'd like to get the scales, if we could, and with that, take a few months to see what some of this stuff was. You get someone that comes in with a pickup truck load, have them loaded onto the scales, still having deposited based on our ordinance as written today, but it would give us an idea of where we are weight-wise. We'd have to be in the 10 cent range to cover our costs of the dumpster and the hauling, the disposal and the hauling fees. Um, and that would also give us a little buffer on manpower to be able to do it because there's going to be a little more manpower involved. Um, so 10 cents a pound to get rid of it. At twenty dollars, I think twenty dollars for two hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, but I don't know what what a pickup truck holds. You know, is it two hundred pounds? Is it four hundred pounds? So, uh, it's a bulky item. It changes it too. Yeah, yeah. So we've got we've got some other things to work out, but we can't work them out unless we hit the scales. I guess is my. It, it's kind of I guess a. My, my was, I thought we were getting the scales to be more accurate on the disposal of demo. Well, that's where I want to head with so it. So we're making, but if you're saying it's not going to work for you, well, I'm not sure I want to invest in scales if that's not what we're going to be doing. Well, I think we can make it work, but I need to know, like I said, I don't know what some of these things weigh and where we need to be. So the ordinance can change to uh, Price per pound. It would. Yeah. 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 And it's a lot more fair. Well, than it could be, but it also would. His point is, it could be: Are we not getting enough, or maybe we are getting too much based I, on the wage? I think we on some know. items. Yeah. On some items, I think we're getting paid fine on. If we go weight wise, and you put a a couch on the scales, or an overstuffed chair, for instance. Yeah. What is an overstuffed chair weigh? Is it 65, 70, 80 pounds? Um, where our ordinance, I think, says it's worth $25 to throw it away. You know, if we go by the weight, we might be undercharging, not undercharging, but for that particular item, 
we might think we might be receiving less. I think the point is you won't know how off we are and how frequently we're off if you do it's a chicken and egg to some degree. Like, exactly. But we're, we're putting money into a piece of equipment that's costing us more, so that's even yes. worse. But think of it like it, an evaluation. Like, so um, whatever the out-of-pocket is after the grant will allow you to, if nothing else, check your fees. And with the amount of money you're spending on those disposal fees because, the dispo the, because that you're not bringing in on revenue, if nothing else, you could change mattresses from $10 to $17.50 or, or something that's more accurate, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to a price per pound, but you can't value that and work on, if you, if you fix the problem of revenue not meeting expenses without scales, then you're continuing to do it arbitrarily based on volume when we're charged by weight. So at least this way, regardless of how the consumer experiences it, they can at least pull things out of the demo bin and weigh five different mattresses over the course of two weeks and decide that the average would be something other than what it currently is. But without data, and you can't get data without the scales, you're never going to be able to evaluate what about our price structure isn't working. Then what are you doing with the scales and to have your price structure fixed? What are you doing with the scales? Only, yes. only going to check on somebody to make sure they're not robbing no, us? No, we're still, we're, you'll still get a demo coming in, household uh, wood, sheep rock, that sort of stuff coming in, and we'd still use it for charging accordingly on that. So, we so do maybe like a chair would get a, a better set price. Right. So but then sheep rock do would be a pound versus right. buy a, a solid Like number. sheep rock, you don't know what sheet rock might weigh because it's a little bit or a little bit more, and you don't have a price per square inch of sheet rock weight or something, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So you can completely revamp the pricing structure and get more accurate on some things and still price each, but move to buy weight on like more loose debris, the de the actually true demo debris. But it's labor intensive. It's it's a bit labor intensive. I mean, we've still got a I've still got a spot in my budget now, which is going to get chewed up this year for one more person, based on us being well. Basically, there's more coming in, there's more debris, there's more trash coming in, so it's costing us more. Fortunately, I get a little bit of extra money in there, where I didn't hire another person this year to help offset that. We've adjusted that for next year's budget, and I still have another person in there for next year. So, Again, with, more money to do this project. That's right. Which theoretically, your your scales will allow you to pick the price point so that you're paying for that. So that if people want to dispose of debris, and and disposing of debris requires the aid of an extra person, then the disposal of that debris pays for that extra person. I think is what they're trying to say. And the extra person that they thought they would need anyway, right. they just haven't been able to fill it yet. Shingles is another one. We charge by the square, which is a 10 by 10 area. Someone comes in and says they have two square shingles. We're not going to lay them out and see if they have a 10 by, you know, a 20 by 20 area if they have two square. So we take their word for it. And I think for the most part, people are honest. <coughs> but shingles is another heavy commodity. Uh, you put that in the in the demo dump stuff, uh, and if you picked up a bundle of shingles, that's a third of a square, one bundle. So. And those, I think, we could adjust the price, and people would be paying more for it, things like that. Not that we get a ton of it, but we do. You know, we get a fair amount of it. So um, the scales themselves, the I've got two different prices on them. It's the same set of scales, but in two different ways. Uh, you can either get it with or without a printer. If we were considering, if we're considering charging the customer. We should have a printer so we can give them a high receipt as to what they get, rather than watching them see a number on a screen and jotting it down on a piece of paper. They should get something to print something. So if we buy the whole kit and caboodle with the printer, the printer, the scales, the cables, the readout, it's twenty-five seventy-four. Now, New Hampshire the Beautiful has a grant program where we can get fifty percent of that back. So we're about a little over $1,200.
if we go with just the scales themselves with the readout and no printer, it's 15.43. Once again, we can get half that like that. So we're at a little bit 750. Can they have the printer later? You can add it later. Yeah. The biggest expense on the printer, the printer itself is $307. The biggest expense, expense is $725 for the tech to come out, install it, and certify it. And it has to be certified because of the um, Board of Weights and Measures in New Hampshire. That's a bit every year? Yes, for it does. It's about 500 bucks a year to recertify it. Uh, I did talk to the folks at Weights and Measures today because my concern was, do we have to be licensed? As a Weightmaster, you do not if it's not a drive on scale. Which surprised me. So how are you going to get a truck on there? You're not. Drive on. You're not. You you unload it into a bin, which we have a bin you can unload it oh, into, okay. and then we pick it up with the skid steer and dump it. Okay. So it's not. I say it's it's not hugely labor intensive, but if we get that one extra person that we have in the budget, we'll have a job. We'll plenty for plenty for everybody to do. So. As much as I'd like to have the whole thing now and get New Hampshire the Beautiful to pay for all of it, I don't know whether they would pay for the printer down the road. I guess to be conservative, I'd like to get just the scales for 1543. And get half the money back from New Hampshire. Unless you want to get the whole thing and get half of get half of twenty five hundred dollars back versus half of fifteen hundred in round numbers. I know it's a lot of money. Uh, skip ahead a little bit. Uh, for some good news, some a little bit better news. Last time I was in front of you, we talked about plastic and how it was going to cost us to get rid of it. The girl in IRA gave me the wrong information. I talked to another girl, the Bonnie, who's been there a long time. It's actually revenue, not expense. So, yeah. So it's four. It's not a lot, though. It's four cents a pound. Uh, yeah, four cents a pound is what they pay me. Would pay us uh, eighty dollars a ton. And I've got I think, thirty bales over there right now. I think they weigh about a thousand pounds a piece. Once again, metal scales. I don't know. But um, so there's going to be this. There's a revenue stream there. That, you know, I was quite concerned it was going to be expense. It's actually revenue. So, so that isn't, it doesn't matter what kind of plastic it is? No, one through seven, yeah. Uh, the question you folks had was, what do they do with everything in the one through seven? The number fives is about the only thing that possibly gets thrown out. Everything else gets decided to a certain extent. So, because we thought, you know, we were talking ones and twos, and definitely something they recycled. Well, they recycled all. The fives are the only questionable thing. So, so do you have to pull fives out? No. No, we can send it all the way it is. Um, we've been doing this since, what, the second week of January, I think. Still don't have a truckload. So, but we're getting close. I mean, well, we've got 30 bales. I think it's about 48 bales for a truckload. Oh, we used to dump that once a week. Yeah. Yeah, we used to dump it once a week at 200 something like Yeah. Really? So. When it wasn't crushed. And right. Yeah. Right. So, yep. So that's that's working on okay. Um, we got five bales of aluminum over there to ship out sometime this week. Get it over to grower. That's been paying roughly twenty cents a pound. So we've gotten anywhere between twenty and thirty-five, depends on the market. So. So if you went forward with the scales, yes. how are you going to? Them from the weather because they have to be enclosed, right? A roof, a roof over it. Just a roof yeah, over it. Which is something very simple. Because you're not going to drive any truck down through there, you're just going to have a car. Yeah, and it's four weather. foot by four foot. Okay. So we're not talking a big massive thing. So, yeah. I, I think we can move forward with the scale at this point. <coughs> and I like the idea of the printer and the printer. Yeah, I want to go with the printer only because I think that we're going to want to have people yeah. I mean, we can still give them a receipt. We just give them a handwritten. Yes. They're going to be sitting. They're going to see the printout. But yeah, it's the difference of five hundred dollars. Uh, it's about a thousand. Yeah, but with an eBay. Back. Well, yeah, five hundred back. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're 
just think that if you're going to do it, you can get 50% of the printer. Mm -hmm. That's it's true. It's easier. That's true. So that's why you folks all the options. Is that, that's going to be under cover as well. Yep. I'm wondering what the output on the thing itself is. Um, if they can just put in a printer ourselves. It's a special print. It's, uh, you mean what type of printer? <coughs> so if there's a, there's a module, I assume, that says this is what the weight is, and there must be some sort of uh, output from that unit to their special printer. Right. We can just take a Raspberry Pi and put our own I don't, printer on it. I don't know. I don't know. But then it's like, well, if we're going to say that our Raspberry Pi is just as good as their printer, then we might as well just write it on a post it down and give it to them and say, so you go. Yeah. That's the information. I know in that packet somewhere I have anyway. That's the printer. So it's a special printer for the machine itself. Is I don't think you can hook another printer up to it. Is the rebate like, it's a short thing? Or it's From what everyone's telling me. Yeah. We get we get twenty percent off the price of the machine to start, of, of everything to start with from Fairbank scales. They're the ones that we, we purchase it from. They give NRRE members twenty percent off. And then I make sure the beautiful, it's from what I understand, you put in, they'll give it to you. I mean right now. Yeah. So I mean no of course no grant is hundred percent cast in stone, but yeah. Yeah. from from what everybody's telling me. Do you have to buy it before you get the grant, or can, do you apply for the grant and then you can buy it? Well, from what, from what the grant policy says, do you have at least half the purchase price available to spend at this time? So, I don't know whether you, I don't know. And do I don't know where the, I could, Where's the money going to come from? You have contingency. Minimally, you have contingency. You have the rebudgeting worksheet. You worksheet. There's, you know, other places where, as we dial down to the end of the year, you can see more clearly where money might come from. Might come from. But minimally, you haven't touched the contingency yet. Mm -hmm. Are we not spending? Are spending more and more within their budget? I know that, but yeah. what we thought might have been a savings going. Possibly to the end, it isn't necessarily that. Every department is. Um, I'm not sure that that doesn't mean that there's not still savings. Well, no, because that's all in their budget because it's still so is the Is the year a, a fiscal year or for the grant? I mean, is it. Um, and I don't know. Uh, I assume it's a fiscal year. New Hampshire, the beautiful because of their signs, remember, has an October 1st refresh date on their transfer station signs. So it might be that the grant cycle runs that same year. And that would be helpful to know. Like, do they know if they're going to, if that's true, do they have, do they know that they have grant money again available October 1st so that we're in a new year with them? So if you say like October 1st or October 1st? Right. I, what I'm saying is, like, is there money still available later this year, even if that's in a different year for NRA? Mm -hmm. So that you can wait a few weeks and, if you want, and see better how the rest of the budget's doing and then do it. I'd like to at least have a guarantee that we're going to get the grant. So we can apply for a grant, right? I, I, I'm confident that they wouldn't say that it's you know, very achievable in the way they're saying it, if it's not really very achievable. We've gotten grants for them before. There's yeah. money for the taking, really. It's just about applying it and committing to purchasing it. So I wouldn't worry about that. And I believe that the last time we did that, we got affirmation that it was available and we were approved before we did the purchase. Because I can't imagine we ever would have done a purchase without knowing no, that the grants there. Yeah. They did bring it up at the last meeting last week and the we have uh, uh, in, our, in our area meeting last week they, they did say grant money is still available for scales, storage units as of right now.
So this is 1543. That's, that's this. just. That's just the balance, right? And not the ram. It would be. Balance. Yep. The quick, quick disconnect and factory calibration, right? Yep. And the installation setup. No. No. It's this one. Mm-hmm. 329. And one sixty. Yep. So the printer is actually only three hundred dollars. The printer itself is three hundred, but the seven and a quarter is the setup and calibration. Which would have to be done every year. Yeah, but it's not seven fifty every year. It's about five hundred. Is that on the yep. scale or on the printer? On the scale to calibrate it to the printer. But the scale itself would have to be calibrated every year anyway, right? Regardless. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So probably it's slightly less than five hundred dollars. Yeah. Because those printers, so it's three hundred seven through them, but they're about hundred and fifty online, so it's not really that big of a difference. So if they would have to calibrate it anyway, why would they just go with them? Buy everything from them. And if you want, I mean, I've got. We don't necessarily have to do the paperwork on the scales right now. I do have the paperwork for the grant. But that does have to be signed by you folks. Okay. We can get that signed and sent in and see if we can get approval. Um, the price on the scales haven't changed since May. I got a new updated price today. It's the same price. He didn't say whether it's going up, down, or indifferent. So I think we have a little time on that. So, I mean, yeah. Worst case scenario, we tell them, we're sorry we changed our minds, keep your money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can get awarded, but you can right. take it. Right. And it also might have a year to, mm -hmm. to do it, too, mm -hmm. so you can go into the next budget, too, if yep. you need to. All right. So there is the grant paperwork. Not much to it. I'll do, I'll do this with you, too. That's all the paperwork on the scales. Well, I think you have to decide whether you're doing the printer or not. Oh, okay. I didn't check off the box, so you have to take the side of the line. Yeah, have purchase price available to right. spend at this time. Yeah. Maybe right in the line. They get, they get text all over the area, so if anything happens, you know, I'll just check all the back up on it. Did you think at all about doing, like, I know it's much less accurate, but like a, just a tire gauge, like you know, putting a piece of plywood on a tire and measuring the, uh, you know, a tire laid flat, measuring the pressure change, calibrate for weight. Never heard of such a thing. No. It wouldn't be very accurate. No. But That's an interesting idea. It is interesting. They use it for um, cattle. Oh. So if you get a large enough tire, I've read about doing it with either air or water, but you you uh, calibrate it obviously, so you know what it is net, and then you know that an increase in pressure by a linear would return. I don't know what the capability would be. This is five thousand pounds. I don't know how much a cow weighs. Like two thousand pounds, fifteen hundred, two thousand, fifteen hundred, two hundred, with two tires next to each other. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. I was reading. I was trying to get information on the website. Sure. You said not. To we don't have to. If you well, I was saying if we want to just go apply for the grant and get guaranteed that we're getting the grant. Oh, okay. Um, but we should make a decision whether or not we're going to include the scale. Because he has so, to put a value in there. I would suggest you put the value with the printer, yeah. and then if you decide not to do the printer, then you're just taking less grant money. That is true. Yeah. 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 So what's the value of the grant? Twenty-five seventy-four. Is there any way we can include calibration for five years? I would doubt it. Okay. So they're in, you know, they want to give you money for fixing up for an item. Yeah. Not out of service. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we are technically asked that for one pair, I guess. Yeah. All right. So let's make a motion to. Uh, I'll move that we uh, apply for a grant from the National Beautiful for half of 2574 for a scale. Second. All right, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Aye
So, Ed, I did have one other thing actually. Can I keep this and I'll scan it to you with a signature? Are you good with that? Sure. I think I'm going to send us a narrative along with it. It's That's okay. Gonna... I just want to keep mm -hmm. it electronic and electrify yep. it. Sure. Sure. Um, I don't know. I don't think this is under. Yeah, it was bumped in the pickup truck with the last work in the back. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Ken Bolduck was in wanting to dump some stuff when the transfer station was closed this afternoon. And they forgot that we changed to winter hours. Where do we sit with him? Where do we sit with him? Did he was, no, the letter has not gone out. He was going to come in, and he has not come in. And I could get a letter out to him. But we're going to see him I know on Wednesday. So, I need to just tell him. No. May I, so, do you want to come in and sign a letter? How do you want yeah. me to, you, you can sign a letter? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, his options are that his ex-wife or his daughter, he gets to dispose their vehicles and he can drive their vehicles to the transfer station to dispose of their properties. He cannot use his own vehicle. Okay, he has his own pickup truck. I get that. And it's a new, newer truck, so I know if, I didn't check it for a sticker. Yeah. I just assume it doesn't have a sticker. No, it does not. He cannot get a sticker on his okay. own. It will have to be, they have to get stickers okay. and he has to drive their vehicle. Okay. Or, or yep. wagon behind their truck. vehicle or whatever, but... Um, Can't be this truck. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I found a letter. Well, he and he that. was told by the board, he was hoping you would reconsider, but right. you, you were pretty direct about that. You were. I was here. He, okay. Yeah. I'm surprised. Well, I would hear that night. I thought that would be correct. It was pretty, it was pretty we were going to send him a follow-up letter, so we would get that out. Sounds good. All right. George. It is that time of year for the truck inspections and road changes on the big trucks. So I can pee over the city of Dover uh, out of vehicle maintenance for $1,000. Okay. Right. Um, I'll move purchase order 1746 to the city of Dover for the city of Dover. He's given you, or is this a not to it's exceed? Already done. They just did. Oh, this is the price. It's, it's going to be less than that. It's going to be less than that, so not to exceed. But I mean, we, you know, it, it's when we send them over here, we don't even see the bill for what a month, six months. Okay, I just want to make sure that. But there was no problem with the truck, so we're. Yeah, all set. Okay. Yeah. So right. Usually about four hundred dollars for an oil change on a big truck. And it's, 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 <laughs> Alrighty. Last year we got the surprise and did it straight. This year everything's good. Alright, well that's good news. It's one good news anyway. Alrighty. All the, all the trucks have been undercoated. Okay, good. Alright, any other discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I tried to get an answer on the new truck today, but no one should be turning their call, so. So what will happen if we don't have it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be very, very busy with my truck. <laughs> we'll well, we'll 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 oh, yeah. What's it's the nice thing though? It, it really is unacceptable. Yeah. 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 You know. All it needs is a hold-up is the boss. The boss. The boss. The boss. The boss. The boss. The My guess is it's already came out. Somebody buys more trucks than us, and yeah. then yeah. somebody yeah. else's truck. But yeah. I can't prove that, so, yeah. you know, when I initially made arrangements with them, that truck was going to be there for their open house in June. Yeah. All set up, so. All right, well, good luck. Hound, hound, hound. I will let you know as soon as I know so. Oh, okay. And as you all know, the five house Friday is done. That's very nice. Yeah. Church Street tomorrow, so that would be out of the way. And it's likely the next day, you know, when the couple is in, that's all it is. That's really good. Nice job. Right, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can you ask those ladies to come in? Sure. You? Thank you very much.
the gym yeah. won't be done again for another Ever. five to ten yeah. years, so that it <laughs> should be available. And the hallways were done, so they don't need to have the gym to store the stuff because the hallways are being, you know. So I mean, it's, a lot of the stuff that happened just happened on one year. And the agent was very generous. Very they accommodated. offered us the space at limited or no cost. Okay. There was no, no cost. cost. Yeah. And we only had to use it one day out of the whole week. Yeah. So that was that was a good thing. And um, I did have a conversation with Rich about a month ago. And just to be sure, as I was putting this together, mm -hmm. does he suspect anything maybe coming up that could displace us again? And he is almost positive that it was not. Nothing that drastic. Yeah. You're not going to be able to have a class Nothing like that. Yeah, it was really the, the, the gym, too, the gym thing. So once you started out putting the coating on the floor, you can't use it for, for weeks because so, it's tacky and all of that. So that was the most because you could have probably gone into a, another classroom, but then the floors on the other side were being done. So it just was a multiple of things that affected the issue. I don't think that We didn't really get any backlash from the parents, I would say. It was a very easy the one day that we went to the Legion. We sent down information the night before, and that was good. I think the communication was key. It was getting out of the mm -hmm. all the difference. Yeah. Does anybody have questions on it? Mm -hmm. All right. And who's going to do team? We'll do team. Okay. Um, so, yeah, if we go to the team group, our team has really remained pretty much the same as well. I think it's a little bit less than we're asking because we have um, kind of pulled our second um, counselor salary out of that um, last year because we haven't really felt it. We didn't hire anybody for it this year, so it was not used. and. Unless we get bombarded with kids, I don't really see that we need it. So um, a 10 to a 15 kid um, average per week can be handled by one. Um, and uh, I'd like to see a little bit. Uh, we had an issue with our later weeks had lower numbers than we really like, so there's kind of a Know, how do we cancel those weeks if we get the low numbers like that? Um, everything kind of evened out, so we stayed in the plus this year. So, um, you know, the whole thing with transportation, I think, is the hardest thing. You know, I, I drove again this year, and that just saves a ton of money. So, I have fun more of it, so I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we um, went through training. Um, our, our director last year did not need any training, so we did not need that fund. Um, our payroll taxes, I believe, will go down on that number because they were less payroll. We were keeping our salary the same. Um, so the supplies is what's a big expense. That's all the tickets and money uh, entry fees for what we do. Um, you know, my I guess if. I don't know if it's appropriate to talk about it at this point in time, but if we can do something easier about those tickets, you know, the process is just, the process is, takes a lot of time and um, it seems to have multiple steps. You know, my, my preference would be, honestly, to set aside money into a Visa card or something like that and let the director take care of all that as opposed to, um, Giving Caroline a call on at the York Work Department and saying, Hey, can I put you on the phone so you can charge these? <laughs> it's difficult when you get a place that will only accept cash or credit card on the spot and you can't go in with a check or be invoiced for it. So I don't know if that, how that works, but you know, we collect all this money in advance, so if you can put that in a portion of it aside, you know to do that, it would be, and have a debit card attached to that, I don't know, so, um, like the 3000 that we're going to use for activities. It's complicated because the advisor has, the auditor has advised 
not to have a separate bank account or a separate credit card for people who aren't actually employees. So you could potentially do that to correct directors. They're temporary employees or seasonal employees. Yeah, because Patty's an employee or she was an employee. But you have to raise the threshold for the purchase order limit because the, you know, it costs three hundred and fifty dollars to get into some of those places with that. But she was saying get a visa debit card and let them utilize the visa debit card to buy those tickets. How does that work for you? Um, I'm not I don't know if it's allowed and we can check into it. I would be concerned about um, what happens with leftover funds and can we tra like transfer leftover funds back into a, back, you know, the bank account. Um, it would still fall within the provisions of the purchasing policy. So you still have to revise the purchasing policy or, or something to accommodate the larger expense. Um, but do you have the same protections from fraud? And, and like that, like you do with a credit card. I mean, there's just a bunch of questions about mm -hmm. it, but... Because mm -hmm. you don't get any statement showing what is the charge to the debit card. Right. Like and you would a credit card. Well, and, and sometimes it's difficult to get receipts. So, yeah. you know, to my mind, a credit card would be better. They have a threshold that allows them what they need to do. I'm not sure that a, a debit card... And you showing them that. Right. Like, so what would be the benefit of the debit card? Like, you know, I don't know that it would accomplish anything other than a credit card. Well, we don't give credit cards to temp employees. Another way to think about it is if we do have a permanent rent director, some of these places, like the one Kelly called about for Caroline, they send different rent departments throughout Maine and New Hampshire on a lot of tickets. So we could order our tickets and be sent directly to the rent director or whoever here at the town. I know Exeter does it. I know, um, like she said, York does it. Um, but they don't they buy those in advance. They do buy in them. Bulk, they buy them in bulk. <laughs> North Berwick does it. But um, where did I end up? I ended up in um, outside of some ago, um, over the summer, and they were given the opportunity to buy them again at the beginning of August. Like you could buy them throughout the summer if you ran out of them. But. It, uh, it's also, we're not bulk. Right. We have up to 15, that's not a bulk for right. us. You know, I mean, I, I don't think that's a bulk. I would think, yes, City of Dover is going to buy 200 of them. Right. That's or a bulk. York. 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 Or York. Or York. All the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so different venues in Maine work with these rack departments, um, like York Wilds Kingdom. And when I was in getting my tickets, they only ordered like a dozen or two extra in August. So maybe it is feasible. It's something that it needs further research. But uh, a debit or credit card yeah. would be easier than having three or four different methods, like when the purchase order comes through giving Caroline permission or having one of us put it on our credit cards to be reimbursed or something like that. One method might streamline the system. Can you post? So they have an activity expense line. Can you post a gift card uh, or a visa a debit card against an expense line? Do I get it? We can do it with a credit card. Um, Does that get a little tricky? <laughs> it, it's yeah. just a whole different kind of bag of worms. And so theoretically, anytime you spend money, we can attribute it to something. We should attribute it to something. Um, but it's like giving someone $100 in cash if you have $100 in the car. I mean, it, seriously, though. And you're hoping they're going to spend it, you know, at the place where they're directed right. to. Not that, you know, it, it, there's just no policy to cover that process. Well, you still you but, have to still come home with a receipt and... Right, so so what's the difference and why not just a credit card? Because then you don't have to hassle you as much. Well, if, if you like, I'm saying if the rec director has... I'm trying to help you, Caroline. You know, I appreciate that. Um, it's a policy thing. So I, I don't think that the, um, that a Visa card offers anything that a credit card wouldn't offer, but it might not give you the same kind of fraud protection. But it would still have to be covered by the policies. So 
you know, you would still only give it to whomever you would give it to. According well, to the I policy. think the credit card also has to be in somebody's name, which right now it's on your name. So a gift card well, wouldn't well, have to be under her name at all. That's true, but you would want that for accountability purposes. And we can get a credit card in a rec director's name if it's. I mean, I don't know. The, I don't know that the policy allows for temporary or seasonal employees, and that's you know a policy decision. But you can get a credit card in somebody else's name. That's not really a big deal. It does require some planning that they have to be hired with enough notice that we know who they are and we can get the security questions filed with paperwork and, and like that. But we can do it. I just think that, you know, the Visa card is of concern for the exact reason that it's a convenience. Which makes it tricky. Well, if it gets lost. Well, I was just going to say that. You know, if it gets, it gets lost, lost, it's not lost. anybody's name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, you know. Can you get another card for balance if it, the other one's well, lost. Well, no, you have to buy another card. Exactly, you know, so you've lost that money on that card that's left. You know, so that, at least with a credit card, you have, you lose it, cancel it, you get debit, another one. I think almost the debit card makes more sense that you just start taking out the money of that account. But if we had a schedule at the beginning of the season of everywhere you were going to go, and with every place we knew whether or not they would invoice us, because plenty of people did invoice us, yeah. and that was, that was the best option, um, and if not, then a credit card's required. If you know, if I could just spend 45 minutes calling six places and saying, this is the date, up to 10 people, here's my credit card number, and then in the end on that day, they would charge me for how many people showed up and email me a receipt. You know, if, if the days are set up in advance, I don't think anybody else has to be involved. And I can just, Chuck or myself can go down the list and set up the arrangements it's a lot of pre-planning. It takes has. planning. Yes. It, you know, that's the other, you know, with planning we can alleviate some of this. Mm -hmm. And it, well, it has been pre-planned mm -hmm. and published when registration goes out. Right. So we and we have checked with all the vendors and some of them from Caroline knows will, which ones will invoice us. And I think the most difficult one um, to pin down is Funtown Splash now because it's they don't invoice, it's pay at the gate. Um, it's like pay people somewhere else. Well, and yeah, then and that might just say where you go, frankly. Yeah. Well, you and know. then, you but know, you there's had the surprise trips routine. You had the one that she had to pay out of her pocket because you couldn't go down to the one on Broadway. And go yeah, that was the last one. But that was, that's a change that would be affected by this. That was the director's choice um, to a certain extent because a couple of the kids didn't sign their waiver. And instead of having them sit out, or get the waiver signed before they arrived, mm -hmm. she decided to go to a different venue where they could all participate. So that I'm just saying it's it's a change. It's it was a last minute change, yes. and unfortunately that needed something to like, so she did. She put down the credit card. So I didn't. Even and, and unfortunately, okay. two of us who had been in contact with her about the schedule were both out of town, and it was just not. Uh, um, but those things can happen. Like, yeah. We went to the movies last year when it was a rainy day, so yeah. you know, and I pulled, pulled out my credit card for that. So. And like even like this year, we tried a new venue. We went to Coco Key, yeah. and it and when we did Water Country too, it said there are special deals that you need like credit cards for a week in advance or something. They'll run it special. If you buy your tickets seven days in advance, you get ten dollars off or something like that. <laughs> Another change to the team budget is the first aid CPR. We put fifty dollars in the line to cover the cards that training happens. Yeah, but that that isn't the cost for one person. Mm -hmm. No. So you're putting it all in team and nothing in Raleigh? Okay, so fifty dollars is is too much for one. We only have one person, right? Yes. Director. But how many? How much? I guess we don't even know how much the cards were. It was. They told me twenty. Well, that was for both first. That was both first aid and CPR. Yes. Well, I don't think there's one. In, I don't think they get a card for first aid. Either. I'm not sure. So no, it was for the CPR. 
you will also notice that there's a change in background checks, and that is to cover an employee and a volunteer if we have more, like Kelly, to drive. So if, like, our volunteer needed CPR or first aid, we could provide them, they could get okay. a card for us. Right. Right. That's what it's called. They're 10 each. They're 10 each. Okay. So that would be to cover a volunteer. Okay. Um, so, um, we are also, we added in a couple of lines to the um, teen camp that weren't there before. We're asking for $250 to get a cell phone. Camp Raleigh has a cell phone, but the teen camp doesn't have a cell phone. And that would cover a cell phone for them so that they're not pulling out their personal phone to make calls and text parents. And then possibly an email address too for the camp world, uh, team camp director, so that um, they have access to sports engine into all of their campers and can send out mass emails. Um, we were having to do that this year on their behalf for several weeks until they were able to get a master list. And then um, we added in three hundred dollars to cover registration. Um, so if we wanted to upgrade um, sports engine or something like that, or look into other options for registration programs online and that were available to us, we can have that to upgrade our capabilities when we currently use. And as you will note, it is down um, from what we asked for over the last two years. And the income is um, more, so we're expecting a $250 difference between the income and the expenses. Different 
venues. So, um, $150 is, um, well, right this year we're planning for $100 to put out signs and notices and stuff like that. And next year we're hoping um, $150 to use the, um, and we may not use it all, but that's to make signs for the A-frames and stuff and to get them up around town so people can um, know what that is. And then um, the supplies would be the food, the drinks, the um, any paper products and any um, craft groups that come out of the um, craft supplies that come from senior craft groups that want to start up with that. Um, and then you'll see we put money aside for uh, an activity fee, which is um, presenters, speakers, and money's paid out if they want to go to some of the communities do a monthly out to breakfast at a restaurant where they do trips twice a year to a casino or something, so that was what those can go to. Um, we put money into a venue cost or rental in case we need to rent a space, like the Legion or something like that, we can offset some of the costs. And then um, we put a small amount into office supplies, so if we need to, once we get the group up and running, if there's certain one of the ways people said they wanted to be contacted was through the mail, and this would cover postage announcements directly to those addresses of people who are interested. And so it, we're not planning to do a town-wide mailing again. We've done that. We've got our results back. This is just targeted. Did you get addresses on the response that sent you? Um, it was all anonymous. Um, and we broke it down, and um, as one committee member pointed out last Monday night, they may have not actually gotten it until later in the year when the open studios happened because they have a Dover address. And I was, um, it may not have gone to the Dover and Summersworth addresses that are technically voluntary residents. Um, and so they may not have been able to respond even though they're a senior citizen. Um, the other thing was is that we, one of the questions we did ask was over 65 or under 65. And of the 35 that responded, about half of them responded over 30 or over 65, and the rest were under 65. And two came by, two or three came by email. So they did not, and they were just comments. They didn't even um, address the questions on there. So I have no idea of some of those people handful of people who responded or not. I know one of the seniors who did respond was put down seniors helping seniors. They want to see like an RSVP group or something like that, which is retired um, seniors volunteer program, where they go out and help each other go to the grocery store or something. So if somebody can't go there, another retired person would go and help them get their groceries or pick up medication or something for them. A lot of comments came back about the ice rink. They wanted to see the ice rink up and running again and wanted to know why we weren't doing the ice rink and that it would be open to everybody in the community and not just to certain population. There was an ice rink? <laughs> <laughs> there yes. was. There was, once upon a time, um, a liner was purchased to build one to the left of the fire station, it was maintained by volunteers, which is why it went away, because it was a lot of work, and then the volunteers wanted the people who enjoyed it to participate in its maintenance, because every time it snowed, it had to be shoveled off, and things like that, and nobody really stepped up to want to take care of it. We relied on the fire department for water to keep it. I yes. Just, you know, so that was an, an burden on the number. Correct. And it couldn't be permanent, from what I understand, because the fire department at field or something is in that area, too. Yeah, it's yeah. So. So, yeah, it just, when you rely on total volunteers to do something, it kind of has a way of going away sometimes, just because it's only a certain few. 
So we have talked to, once we get this up and running, about talking to the um, principal at the school and to some other community groups and seeing if we can get um, the school kids to meet up with the seniors like during the week. I know the um, kindergarten, first and second graders walk down to the library once a week or once a month and maybe interacting with seniors, having a coffee hour with the seniors and sometimes so that they can interact so that that goal or request gets met. Also, you know, it's good to bring the young with the seniors because they, they just get so much enjoyment out of that. And I bet you if you got the school involved, if it's something at the grade school, you know, um, and have um, certain grade levels participate with them. And I do know that, too, there are two or three Cub Scout groups that have ties in the community. Mm -hmm. um, that um, two of them are one of their goals is to do a community service project. Mm -hmm. So meeting up with the seniors and helping them out might be an ideal group for those, or an ideal thing for those troops to get. Okay, any questions for the work department? Any other comments for us? These chairs are Any other comments from the Team. Thank you guys so much for all the time. Um, I guess I have a comment. I, I would like to acknowledge Dean Dean Hawk here. As, as much as I, I want to hurt you for these You're on camera. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I think it's important that we thank her for her time and all she's done. I appreciate it. I agree. She was the yeah, she's an important lead that is yeah, it's stepping it's away. It's bittersweet, for sure. It was a hard decision. This is near and dear. Mm -hmm. It's hard to let go. Mm -hmm. It definitely is hard to let go. But I appreciate so, everything that you do as well. I do have a question for you, though, because I'm not sure you realize that you're still just on a committee that's not the rec committee. It's recreation. And it's the parks and rec. Parks and rec. You're still on parks and rec. Would you be still willing to... Stay on there. I won't. It won't be a lot of work. I promise. Okay, well, let me think about that. Okay. <laughs> you, you have not yet had a meeting due to this right. other responsibility ever. Since, just to give you a sense of the workload. Oh, but, it's, yeah. but this is the part. Um, so, but you think about it because you both of you are right. It's, yeah. I think you're my better half on that. <laughs> anyway, they are two separate things, so if you're not, you know, it's not that you choose not to. Uh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I would, I was actually talking to the council about that the other day. Bring them along. It would be interesting. It's yeah. just time. Yeah. Yes. So I, I did have one question <laughs> for the select board. I know Camp Raleigh and Team Camp are supposed to be revenue neutral and bring in stuff. But is that across the board or is that only those two programs? Like the senior supposed to be bringing the money? Because the committee had talked about that at least to begin with we didn't want to pass off the costs onto seniors. But if that's something that we need to look at for the future, something we would need to put in the budget. Uh, fee collection or donations and grants to support the um, yours is a really good thing to do a small budget, so yeah. I mean, I think if it went from five hundred to five thousand, we would be talking a really different story. So yeah. I think we just need to get it on the get feet, it get it going. Um, that's our opinion. But I think we just still have everyone still has to vote on it. But I don't think you have to lose any sleep over that. Okay, just okay. something that yeah. came to mind recently. Yeah. I don't think we do enough for our seniors, and this is a start that we can get going and start doing things for our seniors. I think it's a great opportunity, and I thank you for doing this as well, because it is a good thing to do. Yeah, that was part of the reason I decided to join You might be surprised <laughs> to see how many people will step up, and you may not have hardly any cost on your own. Yeah. Seriously, you might, you might And be one of the ideas was not, was to have it at a location here in town, like, at um, the Black Bean, mm -hmm. and 
then people could come and socialize and buy their own coffee, and it would be no cost to us, but it would be beneficial to, to, to both groups, the seniors and the black people. And I know my parents just got connected in Vermont, and one of the things that they do for their seniors is they do $5 lunches at the restaurants once a month, and it's offset by the town. But then you get 30 people coming in for lasagna, the Italian food place, or something like that, and the restaurant gets three or four hundred dollars based on the five dollar donation. Um, you get an opportunity to go on Town Elliott's website, and because I've been doing some research, and they have a wonderful program for seniors on there too. Have you gone? Have you seen it? Oh, uh, we have you had her come to talk to us. Yeah, but go and look at all the things that they do. It's, it's mm -hmm. I know she said a little more funding than we do, but you know, but just give you some ideas. Um, um, they do have a gentleman that does seniors, and they he, he, we did hear that they did two or three trips a week, like twice a month. They go out for breakfast, yeah. and then they do a one trip, and they have a bus, and they put them all in there. So they, they have meet. their own bus, so they yeah. can do that because they have that. Like I get, I have a van, I get sold to. But anyway, just take a peek on it. I was that it was very important. So. Okay. All right, ladies. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, but so if we go to the end, we can skip that one in here under three in No, it's not. Oh, I thought I could check on doors. I mean, is someone sitting there? I don't think so. The door's been open. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Well, then we will proceed. Um, 2020 budget and creation of that summary. Right? Yes. And then budget planning. Um, so next week, it, next Monday is another budget workshop. But we're going to notice it if it's all right with you for a regular meeting, and, and you, we can handle mostly budget. But um, for George's non public, for example, um, it'll allow you flexibility in what you choose to talk about so that if there's something else that comes up, you can do that. Intention of still going into um, mostly budget. Um, it also depends on what we get through tonight because there are some time sensitive things on this agenda. Okay, that's fine. Um, so when we go into non public for the. Uh, I'm sorry, is that 6 o'clock next week? Is that. Oh, I don't know. Was it? I don't look it up. Oh, okay. Um, so we have to go back into non public for welfare. When we go back. Also, non public for the personnel because I need some updating on what that was about. I think I know what it's about, but okay. on the highway. Yes. So, uh, yes. I need yes. To, yeah. So, okay. at the bottom so of the we agenda, we can do, um, it, oh, it's no, already no. listed for personnel. We can add welfare and do them together. Oh, okay. At the okay. end. Okay, that's fine. All right, very good. Um, budget planning. So, we have heard from every one now, right? I mean, yes. every department has. We have all of our departments, oh, and all of that data is put on the Excel spreadsheet for the... Um, the ex, um, Rep did some very recent updates, so I need to check to make sure their bottom line okay. is the same, but okay. otherwise, yes, everything's in everything's in the spreadsheet. And what about the revenue side of it? I have revenues ready to talk about. Um, we need to talk about... Our report with the state is due now about yeah. 2019 revised revenues. Okay. Um, but at the same time, since we're talking about what we brought in so far this year, we can talk about where it fits the revenue budget and budget for next year. Next Monday or the tonight? Um, we do not have to figure out 2020 tonight. Okay. It would be really helpful if I can get a consensus from the board about 2019 figures. Yeah. Because I need to enter them in the portal so and then print some things for you to sign. And yeah. It's a time, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we do need to get that going. So that's C, right? And, and yes. 2019 rebudget, which we've already done. Yes, I, you know it's a it's a cursory book. You all have a copy of it. It's yeah. it's you know a document in flux that we can revise at any time. Yeah. But you have it. But yes. we've already. You didn't you didn't officially approve it. I don't know that you have to. It just it's a worksheet. It shows you. It's not changing bottom lines. It's not really so 
Right. So we need to have it, unless there's any questions whatsoever. No. no. And then we, we did, it was very conservative and we're still in very good shape. And as it gets tighter, it might be something that you want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so estimated revenues. Um, do you have that now? Do you want to talk about that now, or do you? We want can to talk about that, but can we go back to budget planning and oh. see, like, um, so we're going to do Monday. Monday. Do we need? Do you want to set up other dates for how many, like, how many more workshop well, we're, nights? We're getting really close. Yes, I know. Uh, the third um, week of October is when we start the budget meeting. So we haven't mm -hmm. done that. Yes. But that's that's when they're meeting the model of department heads. So, I mean, they, they do a budget part of They all present that. Right. But, but we kind of have a sense of your your big picture. We have to have our big you know, picture. It's not just about getting your individual. Exactly. So we have to, um, I would say we have to have it at least done by the second week of October. It's the third week that we're meeting with the budget committee. Yes. Um, so. Yeah. So we yeah. So. Um, so this is a board meeting. Next week is going to be a strictly budget with a few things that we have to get out done first and then do budget. And then um, I would go the next one for that uh, budget as well. Just, get the, just the minimum of what we have to get done. So I'm first supposed to go to transfer station. And, uh, to strike the regional planning. Like yes, that's just a note that strike regional planning is coming out to October 7th. Also, like that was a pretty That was supposed to be a regular meeting. Yes. Yeah. So I can rearrange that. No, no, no. Well, they're coming on the same day as the transfer station? Yeah, so, so we have to come back here. Um, or we can send them there. Oh. And where is this for? The director wants to meet with the board to introduce herself and talk about what SRPC does um, the, as the Regional Planning Commission, um, the services that they offer, and find out um, what they can do for us and what they're already doing that maybe we're not aware of, and just sort of touch base about things. We do. We are dues paying members, mm -hmm. which means we do have a. We get a certain level of service yeah. per year for those dues. Um, they can do like one training for the planning board every year, for example. Um, they're just there as a planning resource. But then also, they speak on our behalf. But when it comes to things like the regional transportation, like ten-year transportation plan and things like that, um, with representations from, you know. So, all right, so we can keep that meeting. Um, and then the following week is Columbus Day weekend, right? So yes. we're not meeting. At least on unless Monday, we're unless we're going to meet on Tuesday. Um, if we're not done, we have to meet sometime that week. Um, all right. Because we, we just have to be done. Uh, so, I'll get as far as. Um, So the 30th, and then the 7th isn't going to be, about, you know, you can do budget on the 7th, but the 14th is Columbus Day. So the, bud the budget committee is starting to deal with the budget on the 23rd, that is the third week. They're starting with CIP and highway. So I would, yes, the week of the 14th, I would say, you've got to get it, they're gonna get it because meeting. they're going to want the budgets ahead of time, yeah. the 18th, the Friday that <coughs> week. So yeah. maybe later that same week of the 14th you have. A meeting. Um, the 16th, the budget committee's meeting. So Wednesday that week is already booked. Um, they're meeting for a third quarter review. We are. The mm -hmm. budget committee's meeting the week. And then we're doing the, the And then you're meeting the following the, week to start budget presentation, to pretty much. Okay. All right. So it's either Tuesday or Thursday. Yes. What are your days like, after Monday? So how does your schedule work? Um. You know, I, prefer Thursday. I prefer Thursday. You prefer Thursday? Yeah. In this particular instance. Mm -hmm. How about you? It's fine. Okay, the one we do Thursday then? Um, the 17th, that's October 17th. What time? What time can you start? 5 p.m. What time can you start? You need to work at 5. I don't get out of work. I don't get out of work. 
got to work. I'm just here. <laughs> it's fine. Whatever time. I mean, I could do 5:30. I can do 5:30. Right. Right. Here, here. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Seemed more appropriate there. 
Um, it was budgeted for 90, brought it up to 120. I've, I've suggested some numbers for 2020. We can talk about those another time, but some of these numbers don't really look like they're going to change. Um, the, so now that we're at the bottom. Do you want to go back up? Yeah, we can go back up. All right. So we're down about $60,000 in this category. You can ignore the green area because we're not filling out all those numbers yet, but we're down $60,000 in that category. We go to the next category, licenses, permits, and fees. And comparing the blue to the column to the left of it, we're pretty much on the mark. We're up by $4,000. Um, the license, the business licenses, that's the junkyard. Um, motor vehicles, we're right on track for reaching the budgeted amount. Um, building permits as well. And then there's other, and other is um, planning fees. Planning fees are are up because we've had some big proposals with bigger fees. So um, again, we can look at any of the detail that you want to look at. But so we're up by four thousand in that category. State sources. Um, I've budgeted meals and rooms tax the same. We never know what that is until we're actually in the tax rate setting process. Process at that time. The, the, t the state disperses that money. They don't tell you ahead of time what it's going to be. So I budgeted that to be level for what we received in 2018. It comes in December. It goes up typically a small amount every year, but it is based on actual revenue received by the state for um, people staying in hotels and eating at restaurants. It's the taxes received um, redistributed to all the communities in the state. So is it a big sum up here, and then it does it, it yes. so it's not necessarily Rollins or because we don't have any hotels. Right. We, and have, it's, we have restaurants, so we right. contribute to that, our, our vendors contribute to that, but it goes through a big pool, and then it's divvied up. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we can't really predict that, but it's, you know, that's what we received in 2018, and it would be in that ballpark. Okay. The highway block grant, the, that's, um, that number is based on what it, the state is reporting at this time that it is expecting to give us. Um, that being said, the state hasn't passed their budget, so, you know, it's a little bit of an unknown. Um, the railroad tax has been received, it's a once a year payment, so those are actual funds as well. And then from other governments, this 11900 that was budgeted to be half of the radar sign that we were proposing to purchase message, on the warrant. The message board? Right. Okay. And it didn't pass, right, so, so we didn't get the grant. So while we're down $12,000, we also didn't have the expense, so it's not really a loss. Um, charges for services. Um, Income from departments, this represents a bunch of things. We can go to the tab for that. So library has a little bit of income, you know, recreation. It, it's all a little miscellaneous bits of income. Transfer station sticker, um, all your demo expenses, and scrap metal, and um, all those things. So it's basically police, transfer station, um, parks and rec, and library. Revenue is, you know, in other words, income from all the separate departments. The separate departments earning revenue for the town. Is so that means those numbers in column G are actuals or projections? Actuals of 18. So, anticipate, so this is not filled out for That's 19. Um, it is filled out for 19 over here in um, in the bigger category. Income from departments right here. We budgeted 163, and then today we've we've received 63 percent. Then we're 27. Right, so, you know, yeah, we're a, a little bit behind. Um, Parks and Rec, of course, will be pretty much done, except for maybe basketball, but um, others of those revenues will continue. I mean, transfer station stickers are mostly done, actually not mostly done for the year, because they start selling those in November, November and December. So for 20. For 20. So, you know, Looking at what those revenue sources are, you know, I, I think you know it's it's probably going to be pretty much on target. Uh, on target with with the 163 that we budgeted. So I kept that level, but this is for the board to decide. Um, 
So we're even with that little section. Miscellaneous revenue sale of municipal property um, that's budgeted primarily for um, cemetery lots. It can also be for surplus vehicles. The 21800 is what we've received so far year to date, which is the highway vehicle that we sold mostly. I, th I think we got 21500 or something, and then... Okay. I thought it was 22500. So, so 21800 is what I have received that line, but I'll, I'll go look into it. Um, so, we budgeted for $3,000, so you are, you know, we're, we're making it up there on that line. Interest in investments, likewise, um, Thanks to our treasurer, we are making far more than we had budgeted for revenue on our um, tax prep, our property tax money that comes in is transferring that to an investment account. So we only budgeted $8,000 for that because it's relatively new. I'm suggesting $36,000 for that. We have um, we have received year to date $26,000. So um, we're about to hit, you know, tap, like we're, we're, we're going into a lull of, you know, a low point in holding money, but then it's going to bump up. It, it depends on when the tax rate's set and when exactly the bills go out. But, you know, the July tax, the June one is the bigger one because the whole cycle is within this tax year. But, you know, most of the revenue, most of the revenue, I think, for the second issue tax bill will be seen in the in the January, you know, that's when you've got all your money essentially from the November, December tax bill is really in January. So we'll get a little bit of that this year, the revenue. But um, you mean the interest. Yes, yeah. that's what I yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in any case, I um, I bumped that up to thirty six thousand and then other we went through other and so that includes um, I, I included the, the self the cell there. So while I removed cell tower in one area, uh, rather, sorry, Hydro, um, so it's a loss in one department, it's a gain in this department, and then um, we've got our transfers. These things are not, um, they're not, they don't affect the tax rate because they're in other funds, they're revenues from other funds. So the capital reserve funds are for all the Warren articles that we're taking a little bit of money or a lot of money from CIP um, or from some other fund. What is it all together? Those are the Warren article numbers there that they reference, and that's the amount of money all together for those. Um, and then this is the land use change tax capital reserve fund. Um, I did put, we have a $20,000 loss in the revenue from the capital reserve funds because it doesn't look like we're doing the murder this year. But again, that also... Right, so, so that we, we also yeah. were saving the $5,000 in taxes that we would have spent for that. So um, that's really it. So um, this is what I am proposing for a bottom line for revised estimated revenue, um, which is down not quite $10,000 from... Um, what we had budgeted, which is not bad considering that $13,000 of that was yeah. the resident tax that we're not doing anymore. So does anybody want to see any any questions or you want to see any detail about any of those things or do you want to make any adjustments to anything? Okay. Thank you for doing that. Sure. So, um, if I could get someone to make a motion to approve that bottom line and these changes, then I will enter them into the system and you can um, authorize yourselves to come in and sign them when you get a chance, because I need to upload this to the state as soon as I can. You can upload it to the state without a signature, right? Well, I, so I, once I, I get your approval mm -hmm. tonight, I will upload the information to the, to the um, portal but then I have to print it for you to sign. Yeah. It's kind of, so, so we're gonna talk about that with a different report. It's a really convoluted process where I have to enter it. I don't have the authority to enter it until you give me the authority to enter it, 
but then I need to print it for you to sign it. Mm -hmm. But at that point, you've already approved it right. because we've already talked about right. it. So um, I'm having trouble with that process with a different report, but that's what I would suggest for this one is if you would... Um, so we can do a motion to accept column F's total of 1526641. Any questions? Okay. Hearing none, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. And so you'll let us know when it's ready and we come in and say aye. Okay. Do we need a separate motion to sign it? That would be good, actually. If you don't so mind. I'll make a motion for for us to sign it. So the motion is to uh, give us authorization to sign the report once it's complete. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Um, <laughs> back to the light for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Duffing cover. Um, the MS4 annual report is the next thing on the agenda. That's the, um, this is the stormwater annual report due September 30th. So you do not have a lot of time to be looking at that, and I apologize. This is, um, we've had some technical difficulties. This is a PDF that does not have shareability unless you have Adobe Pro. It, it's just been difficult, which is why you haven't had this in, you, you've had a template to look at in advance, but um, you haven't had this, it's filled out, um, it is due the 30th, which is Monday, so if you all, now that I have it printed, I can scan it and send it to you if you want to look it over, I can go over it briefly, um, it, it, it essentially affirms that we are doing things that the permit outlines that we do in the first year. The first year is over. So what did we do about, you know, alerting people about our stormwater management plan? We have a public hearing and, you know, we're just sort of giving the details about the things that we did to fulfill the current requirements for the first year. So it requires a signature whether you authorize Denise to sign it after you all, like, you know, Monday's the last day. I mean, it depends how you want to handle it. That's all right. So you can scan this so we can all have the opportunity to read it. And um, what my suggestion would be is if you are all set with it, you reply back to Caroline. Mm -hmm. If you're all set with it. And and otherwise, you can ask me questions and I will reply. And then she can reply back to you. To all. But just and send me questions. Once you get over there, authorization. But I think we should make a motion. Oh, my name's on it. Yeah. Already. <laughs> so, yeah. yep, you can do that. Yeah. That's fine. I'll make a motion that we authorize the chair to sign the honest report. Second. All right. So, all, the, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so, Thank you. once you scan it, and they have the Assuming you all have no in. questions, yep. then you can come and scan. Yep. That would be great. Thank you. So we already talked about the uh, director's visit on the 7th. MS1 and MS1B. Yes, that's the report I'm having trouble with. So, <coughs> someone needs to attest under penalties of perjury that they are affirming the numbers on the report before they get submitted to DRA, and you can't really get a real report until that's done. And so, I don't have authorization to do that. Um, so, you can give me authorization to do that, or you can delegate one of you. You know, it's just a convoluted process of the portal. But the, so, the MS1 is the report of total assessed value in the town. The MS1V is the assess, it's the same for the water sewer district. Um, we report on their behalf because it's assessing. They do not have an assessing function. It is a, just a report of their assessed value and how many exemptions and credits and so forth that they have of people that live in that district. So, um, 
just like the, t the school has to, re you know, they, they send in reports to the state that affect our tax rate. Likewise, the village district has to as well, even though um, because they raise their own rates to support their operating budget, it doesn't affect the tax rate in a practical way, but it does hold us up when they don't do their paperwork, if they were to not do their paperwork, like the school. Like, you know, it's all connected, it's part of the process. So I have a copy of the MS-1, which again is just a copy of, um, so it's got the total assessed value, it's got what, how much of that is in um, utilities, how much of that is in elderly exemptions, blind exemptions, you know, how much are those exemptions and how many people are on them, um, and all like that. So, I guess I'm looking for advice about how you would like for me to handle this report. Ultimate, so this is a draft. This is what it looks like. It has all the information on it. It's only a draft. So it's not signable, but it is, in effect, what you would be signing. So you need an authorization to? I need authorization to push the button to get the official report that you can actually sign. So I'll make a motion to authorize Carolyn. Yes. Okay, open for discussion. Clarification. You can't go to the portal without our authorization to enter the data. So I'm in the so I take the information out of assessing and I upload it into the portal. Okay. And they have the information, um, but you can't really submit it and process it and print out the official signable report until you certify under penalties of perjury that you are um, attesting to the veracity of the data. So, Which is you. I don't understand why that wouldn't so be me, but it's never been problem. delegated to me, so we're just in the first so year. This is what we're doing, is delegating that the, you are the one that's going to say this information is that. And then ultimately it's going to come back to, and then you're going to authorize yourselves to come in and sign this, because you will still be the signing authority on the document once I push the button. Are you the maker of the document? The, I am the uh, printer of the document, so to speak, but Avatar maintains the assessing information. It's assessing. Uh -huh. So I go into the assessing program and I print this report. Okay. And then I upload it to the portal. Okay. And they take it and hold it until I, I or somebody certifies it. And then it's printed as a non-draft copy. It's, it's convoluted. I mean, it's like Why a lot of extra time. Why does it They are to make the numbers. Yes, and they are listed, but they, because you're the governing body. So you, you are the assessing officials, and you delegate that to an assessing firm. But essentially, um, you know, the buck stops with you, and you're in charge of making sure it's correct, even though you contract it out exactly because you're not assessors. So, this is the state, having a state to process. So she's, I'm not even going to sound stupid, but should we send them the same text to them for them to sign it, to file it with our files, and then if they say yes, then you can go forward with it? I mean, accountability is with Avatar, not with you. Right, and to be clear, as much as this is lots of process upon process, um, when they have questions and problems, you know, they, they look, they compare this report to the previous report, and when things don't match and things don't make sense, they ask. Um, the state. state. Yeah, okay. So it's it's not as though it can't be revised if something is really bizarre that the, isn't clear or doesn't appear to be correct. So they'll ask me, but they also work with Avatar all the time for a number of other communities, and they will ask them as well. Um, it's just the function of you all being in charge officially of what you're in charge of when, you know, you're really the decision-making authority and you have the people working in the different fields who actually do those things. You hire an assessing firm to manage these things for you, and yet the state is going to still hold you accountable for the numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't hire Joe Schwab, the assessor. Right. 
Well, and you, you have to get your, your um, assessing contracts approved by the state. They, they review the assessing contract to make sure it has the, le the scope that it should have and, and like that. And I'm sure they would express concerns if they had, you know, parents concerns to express, they do approve the contract. Mm -hmm. So, the spots for signatures have your names. So, um, so we, have a, we have a motion on the floor, correct? Yes. Motion on the floor. For, for, to, for the board uh, to sign? No, to oh, authorize you. Oh, to press the button. Okay. Press the button. And then further for you all to come in and. Well, then we'll do this separate. All right. So then, okay, so all those in favor of the motion to Caroline to be able to process this and hit the button, um, the assessing report, say aye. 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 Okay. Motion's passed. Now we need a motion for us to be able to come in separately and sign this report once you have committed it in its print file. Okay. Make that motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And motion passed. Thank you. Okay. We're done. I'm done with that. Um, space needs. Um, there was a bit of an update with that. I have been in touch with the consulting firm. Um, they are ready to go. I set it up with the county for them to be waiting for their request for data. My guess is they likely have that data for it by now. Um, the next step is um, for them to come in and interview people. They will be interviewing me and the police chief and um, a number of officers, they will be looking for other people that we decide for them to interview. So, um, you all can think about whether or not you want to talk to them or have them talk to anyone specifically. Um, and, and if there are specific things you want for them to look at. But they're starting the process. I believe they're looking to have the data pretty well organized before they do the interviews. They should be setting up the interviews around now. They will be doing it over a shift change with the police department with the same questions so that they can hit as many people at once before they have a chance to talk to each other so that they can have, you know, off the cuff, non filtered responses. So I think we should have good results. Um, I'm feeling six weeks. She felt as though we should be done with, have, we should have results within six weeks that can then go to the committee for the committee to evaluate. Should they be talking to like struggle dispatch or department heads, highway, fire, fire? Should they be talking to them because they interact with the police, or is it strictly about the police department only? Those, so public safety officials, the highway department and fire department work with the police department. Mm -hmm. So they have a unique first-hand perspective and what it's like to work with them at certain times of the day, certain times of the week, over certain kinds of calls. Mm -hmm. So I think that's appropriate. Okay. What about the dispatch center? Well, they'll get the data from dispatch. I'm not sure what the what else they'll get okay. from dispatch. I mean, they can look at data and compass to other places if they want to do that, but I don't think dispatch is going to offer any kind of qualitative information. Okay. What about um, surrounding towns that respond to emergencies to our town? So for Dover. Like police chiefs for the three? Oh, I don't know. I'm just wondering. I don't know how deep they go into it. You know? I feel like at some point, I would think 
only so many interviews are included with the whole process. Yes, yes, yeah, I didn't know if it's just our people or are we get them broadened out a little bit. Depends what we're looking for. Right. It depends on what you're looking for. So I think Jessica's quite, quite right that there's a certain level of service and information for the price, but we can certainly talk about the value of seeing what those departments have to say about their experience with our department and, you know, particularly in light of having been short-staffed for, you know, the experience of, you know, and, and seeing how we're better staffed now. Like, there's a change in perspective there. Well, I would, I probably would just go with our health department heads right now and see and let them ask it. Because they know that we have, um, I don't know if they call it mutual aid for the police department, but they do have, they do. Re, you know, but they have people who assist us because we sometimes only have one police officer on duty at a time where they have multiples around us. So I don't know if that's important part of the conversation or not, but I think at least our two department heads. I will ask them about what level of, you know, what, who time. Do they normally, what, yeah. Do they normally interview, um, and it does it go outside of our town, you know? Um, and get an answer from them, I know we could talk about it a little bit more. Because I don't know if there's one town in the city that covers more than another. But you know, it's a report. But yeah. then you've got Summersworth with you know Coleman and up there, yeah. so I mean, you know. In South Florida, report as well, it's the other end. Yeah. You know, so it all depends. But all right, um, I would suggest that at least the other two departments, because they work a lot together. Oh, yeah. 
for Wednesday the sewer and water. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. It's every two weeks. Yeah, 6.30. Right. Yes. Legion. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, this week I'm going to have on the... I don't have anything. I'm going to go to a meeting on Wednesday. Um, I'll be there.
So when you say they clear zoning, they're planning, are they all set to go with this? They're not all set to go quite yet. They still need um, approval from the water sewer district and the state for the expansion of water. So they're working that out still. Because there's concern from the fire department that that hydrant is and the water is not acceptable for so firefighting. The, so the water doesn't believe that's true. So the planning board has put the stipulation on this proposal that the water pressure as a result of these seven homes will be proven to be no worse than it already is. So, you know, it, it's so while the state only and maybe the district, I don't know, but the state only cares about you reaching a certain minimum pressure. We're requiring that they meet whatever state standards, but in addition to that, that this project will not re result in existing customers experiencing diminished pressure. So they're, they're going to improve the system or keep it equal, in other words, rather than draining the system as far as pressure is concerned. So is it possible that without improvements it would be the same? So the, the, the people developing it have to make more improvements? Yes, but just like when um, in a subdivision, people build a road. You know, the road they build at their expense, but then it becomes a town road typically, not always. And then the town has to maintain that going forward. So it may require a booster pump to get pressure to meet the correct standard for that subdivision, which likely would improve other property owners in the area, their pressure as well. Um, but then if, if that is required, then that um, pump station would be that booster pump would be an asset of the water sewer district that they would have to maintain going forward. Maintain it or not by? Would How it be part of the maintain it. Maintain, maintain it. it. And sure. the bottom of it is really between like the district and the property owner about what they work out for, who's paying for what exactly. Is this the person who went to the last water district? I don't know who that was. He was on the far right. Yeah. He is the property owner? Yes. yes. And he was asking for um, he was told by the state or something that the water sewer district had to sign off on plans that had to, and he had to pay for an engineering study to have it done. Yes. And then they were discussing whether they pay for it and he reimburses them or not. But this is, this is outside separate of that, right? It's same outside, guy, but it's different same, issues. Same person, but, it, but it's all tied together because the planning, planning would not issue them full approval for their subdivision until they get water and sewer, like water figured out. Got because it. you can't have a subdivision with no services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll get the required paperwork submitted, the planning board will review it, and it'll be part of conditional approval ultimately, to, you know, or some kind of part of the process. And you wouldn't require them to do wells versus being hooked up to the city? So because the one house out there, the Victorian, is in the district and receives water, mm -hmm. it is an expansion of the district to put more homes on it, but at the same time, those new homes are geographically within the district. So that's a nuance that I'm not going to, you know, can't comment on legally, but their ordinance does require that people who live within the district hook up to district services. So people who live in the district can't have a well? Correct. Oh, I didn't know that. Or a septic tank. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to get. And it may be a provision that, like, if you have, a, like, a septic before, like, sewer was installed yeah. in your street, yeah. then you, then you can keep it until it, like, goes yeah. back. And you but you're supposed up. to hook into it rather than install a new septic system. I think that my water goes, because I don't really care about getting water, but it's because it comes through my backyard. It comes through the street. Yeah. 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 At the end of the line, the though. Was like back then. Yeah. Oh, really? Benefited from your neighbor. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going well. He, he, you know, they reached a hurdle, and it's not yet approved. Um, the John Flatley Company owns a um, Terra Meadows next to Market Basket in Summersworth. They received um, approval through the Summersworth Planning Board to expand that apartment complex, and they are currently building new apartment buildings back there. 
Um, I met with a representative from that company last week. They would very much like to build yet more apartment buildings in Rollinsford at the end of that road behind what they're currently constructing, which is behind Terra Meadows. Um, they need to go to the ZBA for that. They, it's a commercial district. It does not allow for multifamily family dwellings. Um, the height, it would exceed the height requirement. Um, they've got to go through Summersworth to get approval of um, expansion of sewer and water utilities out there. So they will come to ZBA not until they have what they need from Summersworth. They need Summersworth to approve the expansion of sewer and water. Um, Summersworth, I would expect, would want a transportation study, a traffic study, for the intersection of High Street there. Um, I believe it is probably up to the select board when the time comes about whether or not you want to allow the expansion of utilities into Rollinsburg, in addition to them going to ZBA. So by no means is it real yet, but they will be coming through the process one, at some point once they get through Summersworth. That is two 48 unit buildings. So it's a significant impact. It might also qualify for a regional impact study. Yeah, so they're going to provide financials on all that. It'll be interesting, but it's, you know, it's out there a little bit, but I just wanted to get you thinking about that. Um, two 48 unit buildings, four stories. So they need it, so not allowed to have multiple dwellings, variance for that, and the variance for building height. Minimally, they may need other building, other variances as well. Um, the firewalls in tomorrow, um, today, it came in, the firewall that you all ordered, the Wi-Fi firewall from the front office, we're going to have internet down tomorrow afternoon um, while that's getting switched out, but it should result in better Wi-Fi. So, we'll see about that. Installing a firewall? Um, well, because the firewall device is also a, um, um, it's a, it's a router. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a multi-device cool. thing there. So, just want to let you know that that's going on. We needed it for the DMV uh, computer. Um, there are some purchase orders. Um, I have two purchase orders for the board to consider. There's another one in here as well, um, in a variety of mail. But um, the first one is PO 1751 to Middleton Lumber, and that is for the reconstruction of the front step out there. Um, we've purchased order 1751 to Town Middleton for board supplies with the new front step in the amount of 31051. So, Middleton Lumber. Middleton. Oh, Middleton Lumber, sorry. Yeah, yeah I didn't complete that. Which is yeah. Yeah. Any All right. Any discussion? Ooh. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. This other purchase order is um, a discussion item. It's for to Avatar for approximately $100 a month. That's based on last year's figures. Last year's figures is are is really with $96 a month. Um, this is online assessment cards. Um, it's prorated for the year, so it would cost $300 this year. It would be $1,200 approximately for a full year. It would, it's part of my budget request. It's reflected in the budget that the budget proposal and the budget worksheet. I'm asking for it now um, because with the change of town hall hours to Tuesday, I think it's going to help a lot with the confusion of the people who are primarily not residents and otherwise not going to be aware of the change. So you can think about it and ask questions. It would be a benefit from day one because people are 
calling for this information and asking for it to be emailed because they're driving in during town office hours to get this information. And so it's disruptive to workflow, but it's also not good customer service. So I put it out there. So um, what does this do to stop that? What is this going to do to stop It's going to provide a link. We will put a link on our website okay. that says property tax assessment cards are here. Yeah. And then you can search in a variety of ways to get the card you're looking for by address or by map and lot so they can get the information they're looking for. So purchase order 1752 to Avatar. I'll move purchase order 1752 to Avatar for $297 for online assessment. Any discussion on it? Alright, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. I think that's, you know. I cannot overstate for you the enormous impact that will have. <laughs> and that's all I have for my. Oh, I have one other thing for my. Um, budget, but it is a required document to certify what we entered as a default budget. So 
I just need a, cert a signature on the front page. So, to file the MSDTV for 2019 for the default budget of the front side? All those in favor say aye. Aye. So we all have to find a position, right? Yeah. It's in this book. M-T-T-V. David Thomas, Paul, and Bob. So it's print and then the Did you roll call? We're waiting. No, we're waiting. Okay. They are the same number. Okay. Yes. Yes. Denise, yes. Okay, we're now. 